Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome to Simple Man's Comics. It is Brian and Jack, and we have another great top 10 for you. And this time we're talking about Peach Momoko covers. Peach Momoko is probably one of the hottest artists right now. No stranger to this channel. We've talked about a bunch of her books. No stranger also that I like some and I don't like some, but we have some great ones on this list, don't we, Jack? Absolutely. Now, we've talked about Peach Momoko several times on several programs on the Simpleman's Comics YouTube channel. And we, we started talking about doing these targeted top tens to really spotlight and highlight different characters, different themes, and different creators in the comic book community. This is the list that you demanded. Peach Momoko is on the, the tip of everyone's tongue in the comic community. It, she is the most talked about and in-demand artist at the moment. So we're going to bring to you the top 10 Peach Momoko cover on the market right now and this is an ever-growing and changing list because she is constantly putting out new work that seems to grab everyone's attention right so no longer are we gonna make you wait we are getting into it right now starting with number 10 top it off the list at our 10 spot we have our own channel sponsor itself frankie's comics and we have that batman adventures right yes this is one of those things that frankie's comics and owner kevin fields does as good as anybody in the comics market, he knows exactly when to find an artist who is absolutely tearing up the market, grab that artist, and put that artist on the right book. This is Peach Momoko's first DC Comics cover, Batman Adventures. We're talking about the return of the comic form of the animated series, and this cover featuring Harley Quinn has won over non-believers of Peach Momoko, like my man Brian non-believers of store variants like the mighty mel v who's been on this channel on uh, both the civil mids comics and friends show as well as the old hot and cold show who has been very anti-store variants but told me that he bought this book so this is one to be on the lookout for it comes with a trade dress as well as a virgin cover option and is still available at frankiescomics.com yes and it's important to say i know you said virgin but it's also it's like the cover B with the minimal trade dress, right? Right, right. So those sold out really quick. I personally, I've ordered a copy of the regular trade dress just because I like the trade dress. It yes. gives it that old classic Batman Adventures feel to it. And it's the classic Harley. Great cover on this. Definitely made me a believer on this Peach Momoko cover. Yes, and don't forget, Simpleman's Comics Patreon members get that extra special discount at frankiescomics.com. Then next on the list, we have that Fallen Angels number two. This isn't a store variant. This is actually an incentive variant. We're talking about that one in 25 for this one. Right. This is that new X book, Fallen Angels. This is a one in 25 incentive that Peach Momoku features X23, Laura Kenny Wright on the cover. And of course, that's one of the hottest and most cult popular characters in the Marvel Comics universe. So there's always going to be attention and heat on that type of cover. Like the title of this book, this book has also fallen a bit from its original kind of heat and price. We saw this book around release day when we were talking about it on the Bolo show, it's selling for $40 to $50. There's been an influx of copies on the market. I think a lot of retailers saw this coming because this was right during the height of this like Peach Momoku cover craze. So this one now sells for about $25 to $30. So ratio or slightly above, um, but is extremely popular and in demand. Not one of my personal favorites. I know it's not necessarily one of yours, Brian, but this has been one that a lot of people have liked. I think X23 has a lot to do with that. Right, and it's important to know that if we were to put just what we liked on the list, we'd be leaving a lot of stuff out that needs to be noticed and brought to the attention of yeah. viewers and people that make up Civil Man's Comics community. Then rocking along into number eight, we got another exclusive variant on here. And this is that Red Mother number one. This is limited to 300 copies and it is hot like fire, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. Red Mother is one of those new popular titles from Boom Studios that hit the market in 2019 and really garnered a lot of attention um, from both readers and members of the speculation, investing, uh, and collecting community. So you saw both first and second market buzz on most of those boom titles. And that trend has continued into 2020 as we now have news that Netflix has signed a first look deal for multiple years with Boom Studios. And then this is really going to apply to a lot of these titles. And 
One that we've talked about on this channel is Red Mother. I'm personally a huge fan of this book. And this is kind of that perfect storm. You had a, a independent title that was extremely popular, a, a very low print run on a book, and an extremely popular artist. And when an artist like Pichamoko ascends in the way that she does, and people want to start collecting all of her work, and there isn't a ton of work out there, a book that's limited to just 300 copies becomes in demand and rare. And that's why this book is seeing sales of 60 to $70. So for a retailer exclusive, this is a big time home run. It's one to be on the lookout for. And if you're a Peach Momoko completionist, it's gonna be a tough one to put together. Then coming in on our list on number seven, we got that Spider-Man and Venom Double Trouble number two, Incentive One and 25 variant. This is one book that took off, I think, just because of Momoko's art alone. But where are we at with it now, Jack? Yeah, this is a book, Brian, that like was kind of a perfect storm. Momoko was on fire. It was an incentive variant, but it was also a Venom cover and a Venom variant and a Venom variant that wasn't heavily ordered. You're talking about an offshoot miniseries, Spider-Man and Venom, Double Trouble. And then you're also talking about issue number two, not issue number one, uh, not a book that really anybody was paying attention to for first appearances or things like that. So because of that, this book didn't get heavily ordered and it's really dried up. This was a book that we were talking about on the Bolo show the week it came out, $70 price. And then it kind of dropped to about $40, $45 and it's seen consistent sales of that. But here's the thing. This book has a bullet on it. It's one to pay attention to. We talk about on a regular basis on this channel, the value of waiting until a book dries up and it just isn't available. There are three copies listed right now. One for $44.99, which is the pretty typical selling price. But once that book sells, Brian, there's only two copies left on eBay, one for $119 and one for $150, which may be overpriced, but may become the new selling point. We don't know. And that's the beauty of a variant that seems to be this scarce. Now this next one we're gonna talk on this list, I'm actually surprised this one's not higher on the list because this is a book that you don't see come up very often and there's not too many people aware of it. But we're talking about that Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number 100 this was the North Carolina Comic-Con variant by Peach Momoko. Yeah, absolutely. This is a book that kind of had a lot going on with its release. As Peach Momoko really started to rise in popularity, North Carolina Comic-Con was in a perfect situation because she was already scheduled to be a guest. They had a uh, convention variant planned with this upcoming big event issue for TMNT 100. This cover, I think, is the, this is the book that I don't think a lot of people are aware of, Brian. I don't think people have seen this. And, um, it's, a, and it's not, I won't say typical style, but looking at it, it doesn't scream Peach Momoko to me. Yeah. And like you brought up before, it's also gorgeous because it almost looks like a movie cover. Right, it gives you the feeling of almost like a Japanese cinema cover. Uh, and, and it's a great depiction of the Ninja Turtles. It's very different. And as a collector of Ninja Turtles variants and comics in general, um, this is a book that really was striking to me upon seeing it. When the convention started, though, there were some printing issues, and this book wasn't readily available. Instead, everybody went for the signed prints. They had some prints available for sale, and that's what people had that weekend at the convention. The book came out later, was sold online, only a 250 print run, which I think was smaller than what they had initially, you know, kind of looked for. So I think they had some issues with printing and condition, which has happened before uh, at, at conventions. And it's, it's a difficult thing to deal with. And all of that is kind of a perfect storm. This book is a $50 book. I think it's a book with potential to do more. I know there were a lot of uh, in store variants for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 100. And you have to really be discerning when picking them. But I, I really think if Petra Moko is going to continue to be a cover artist that People are going to love and chase her covers. This is a book that is going to be hard to find. It's important. And it's just an A-plus uh, piece of art. It's a real home run to me. Yeah, I'm glad it's on the list. Like I said, I thought it might be a little bit higher. But hey, we're smack dab in the middle of it. Do us a favor also, comment down below. Do you have a copy of this? Are you aware of this? And if you saw it, would you pay 50 bucks to see it? I think I would if I found it for 50 bucks. But with that being said, also, we are now halfway through the list. Do us a favor, click that thumbs up button for us. And if this is your first time watching our channel, please consider subscribing. We're now down in the bottom part of the list and coming in at number five, we have Read Only Memories number two. This is that incentive one in 10 variant. And this one's one a lot of people look after. This is one a lot of people know for Peach Momoko, right, Jack? 
yeah, this part of the list, Brian, is going to get tougher to get. It's going to get more expensive, um, and it's going to get kind of more high profile. This book was on everyone's radar after it came out. But we talked about this book early, Brian, because we pay attention to these IDW 1 and 10s. We know that, especially in a series like Read Only Memories, one that didn't have a ton of reader buzz, wasn't on everybody's radar, wasn't one that the, the non-readers were paying attention to at all, especially coming in with issue number two, but it hit that perfect storm during that wave of Peach Momoko um, kind of heat that we're still in the middle of riding. And this book has just dried up. It's gotten more and more expensive. We saw it escalate to prices of 70, 80. And now there's three copies listed right now. One's 100, one's 125, and one's 150. I mean, that is the going rate. There's a 9, 8 copy listed for like 250. So this is a book that the completionists, there's about two or three of these Pichamoko covers where they're going to have a really hard time just acquiring a copy. And we could see some of these variant prices get really silly if she continues to ascend in the way that we kind of expect within the uh, variant collecting community. Yeah, you know who I immediately think of when you talk about stuff like that are those um, one-off indie covers like Art Germ did, right? Where the yeah. completionist for Art Germ can't find some of those covers. This could be the same way like you're talking about when it comes to Peach Momoko and some of those fans are trying to collect all the covers early. Here we have Marvel Rising number one. Again, another incentive variant with that one in 25. Marvel Rising was when the title kind of got hot because people are speculating a lot on like the cartoon and the animated series. But then you add in an incentive from a hot artist you got prices that are going up there and then not too many people ordered 25 copies of Marvel Rising. Yeah, right. And which is what really drives the scarcity of this book. Um, Marvel Rising was a multi-level, multi-platform and um, kind of product line that Marvel it kind of issued this initiative to try to get more kind of like young female fans kind of engaged. So you had a cartoon surrounding many of the, the female stars of the Marvel Universe. You had a toy line that was very, uh, you know, female focused. And these toys in, in, are still in stores. This is still a cartoon, I believe, that's ongoing. So it's still uh, a thing. It just didn't, doesn't have the attention that it had when it was first initially launched. But when this came out, it, it was a big initiative. But this isn't something that really was a secondary market comic. So you didn't see a lot of stores order 25 copies. But this is the really first time I remember a Peach Momoko cover kind of getting people's attention. And people really liked this cover sort of from the get go. So this doesn't surprise me. We heard things like kind of it had like a coloring book feel to it. Uh, like it was almost done cr crayon style. Yeah. I was going to say I liked this cover on this one because it fit the story yeah, it fit very the very much it fit, fit everything and we've seen with these youth oriented titles that are tend to be aimed toward all ages when you have these incentives and they dry up they really dry up so the last couple copies of this book have sold for a hundred dollars but there isn't a raw copy available on ebay right we are down in that bottom three now, and coming in at number three, we have Vamps versus Wolves number four. This was limited to, what, 100 copies in Gator Bait Comics, right? Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, my beloved South Carolina Gamecocks quite, quite often have been the victim of being Gator Bait, so uh, this one kind of triggers me a little bit. But this is one of those difficult-to-find books. This is one of those books where you were just talking about where we said, if you, you know, there's completionists out there who are chasing these Peach Momoko covers. And even though there aren't a ton of them, which would tend to make you believe that this is an attainable goal, there are some that are extremely difficult to get. And this is the granddaddy of all difficult to get books because like you said, limited to a hundred. You're talking about a small press publisher with Gator Bait. You're talking about a book that is just drying up by the minute because it was a little bit more available when that Peach from Moco craze first began as this book got a little more attention and it was, you know, added into like databases on apps and on websites and, and started to get kind of coverage in the secondary market. We've seen this book dry up sales of over $200, 225 to towards 250. We're seeing graded sales of 500. I mean, it's absolutely nuts. Then hit us at the number two spot. This is a weird book because we gotta be honest, this book hasn't even come out yet, but People are aware of it. Prices are crazy. And we're talking about that Marvel Zombies Resurrection number one. This is going to be a one in 50 variant. I don't know how many stores are going to order 50 copies of this, but Jack, you and I were talking 
probably more stores than we think just because Peach Momoko's name is already out there. Right, right. And especially if people have seen what this book is pre-selling for, we've got a sale for 150. We've got the book listed at like 135 with multiple watchers. And, and I think that's going to get people's attention. The whole COVID situation has put a halt to the comic books business. So we don't know what's going to happen when it gets restarted. Will these books be available? Either way, more will inevitably be listed. But this book deserves a spot on this list because it shows the demand and the interest here. It's very reminiscent of the Red Mother cover. It's very reminiscent of the Fallen Angels cover. And those are two proven popular covers. You kind of combine them and you get this cover, which has been very, very well received. Also, it's a higher ratio than we've seen from Peach Momoko with the one in 50 versus one in 25. Um, it's definitely one to pay attention to. I don't know that it's going to stay at these current $150 prices. I wouldn't expect it to, but it, that price alone is enough to really get your attention and make you pay attention. Yeah, this is one I want to know also is getting in hard grade might be an issue because we all know Marvel's print paper sucks. Yes. And we all know that this cover all around, it's black. So is it going to be color rub? Is the back of it black too? Is the back of the cover white? So when it sits on top of it, you're going to get color rub on it. All these things come into play. So a lot of those people out there doing pre-orders definitely want to be careful about that. But I agree with you, deservedly so. It comes in at number two on the list. And here we are, the moment you've been waiting for, our number one spot. Of course, you probably figured it out if you're a Peach Momoko fan, and we're talking about that Ghost Spider number two, one in 25 variant. This is one that put, I won't say put on the map, but a lot of people definitely took notice when this cover came out, Jack. Yeah, this book blew up because of the art alone. The, the name on the cover was irrelevant, but once it did, it left people asking, who did this cover? And once they discovered, they started to pay attention, and it really began the trend of all of these books that we're seeing. This cover is really unique, but it's reminiscent of some other classic Marvel covers. It really gives me the feel of that popular Matina Gamora variant. It gives me the feel of Incredible Hulk 340 from Todd McFarlane. Um, it's it's almost reminiscent of, say, uh, Killing Joke, and you kind of get that feeling with a more modern look, holding up that cell phone, seeing that Gwen Stacy's face is Ghost Spider. It, it really says it all right in the art, and, and that's rare. Ghost Spider is also... I, I've talked about Spider Gwen on this channel. It's my favorite character. It's my family's favorite character. We've seen it, uh, this character grow since creation right here in Charlotte, North Carolina. And, uh, you know, I, I think the popularity for the character and potential for the character is immense. Uh, this book, it has unlimited potential because you have just one of the most popular characters in existence. You have a one in 25 incentive variant on a number two issue on a title that wasn't really a big seller. And then you have this cover that I think is going to go and, and stand the test of time and be iconic. And because of that, we're seeing sales of like 250 to 280 on this book. And not only are we seeing sales that high, it's very difficult to even have a copy come up for sale. This book is so popular that it's already been homaged by Peach Beach Momoko for a store retailer exclusive featuring the Gwenum look that we've got in the honorable mentions portion of this list. So there it is. There's our top 10 for Peach Momoko covers. One thing I noticed looking at this list, and if you've watched this channel, you've known I've been vocal on here where whether I like or not like Peach Momoko. And then going through this list, I've kind of came down to the fact that I like Peach Momoko covers when she's doing female characters more so than the other type of characters or action like the spider-man venom not big on that but a lot of the covers i do like happen to be when she's doing the female characters or the all ages type female demographic outside of that ninja turtle north carolina comic con brand i absolutely love that so that kind of blows that theory out of the water but i've noticed from looking at that list that's kind of where my likes and dislikes are with with her covers and other people have may or differ from that opinion but either way great list and i'm not going to knock it great fantastic artist there's our top 10 jack fantastic list oh thank you man and i gotta tell you we got more great books coming with this honorable mention so stay tuned because we're gonna hit you with some other great covers that just couldn't fit on this list it was really difficult to only pick 10 and the great thing is peach Momoko's career is just starting she's going to do more covers there's going to be more hits and this probably will only be volume one of a living top 10 list that we're going to have to do so stay tuned for more of that coming from the simpleman's comics youtube channel 
For Brian, I am Jack. Thank you for joining us and stay tuned for the next video. Single like oh he rap, rap. You thought it was a drought, that's cap cap.